Over the past several months, I've talked to plant engineers, facility managers, site managers, electrical supervisors, and many others. I've learned that many hospitals do not know how to properly test the line isolation monitors per the NFPA 99. There is an average of 600 surgical fires a year. The Joint Commission has updated their concerns about surgical fires. So, this video is to explain the NFPA codes, how to properly test the limbs, how often they are to be tested, and how to document each test. Quite often you will hear the term limb. This is the acronym for line, isolation, monitor, and this point is crucial. Pressing the test button puts the line isolation monitor in alarm by lifting the limb's ground wire, thereby creating an internal fault to alarm the limb. This only tests the alarm circuitry to make sure it will respond to a fault, but it does not know how much current was leaking to ground. Let's look at the NFPA 99 codes. We'll start with NFPA 99 code 6.3.4.1.4 says. The limb circuit shall be tested at intervals of not more than one month by actuating the limb test switch. For a limb circuit with automated self-test and self-calibration capabilities, this test shall be performed at intervals of not more than 12 months. Actuation of the test switch shall activate both visual and audible alarm indicators. So, there are two types of line isolation monitors and two types of tests. The interval testing required for each type of limb is different. The older limbs, like the one pictured here, are called analog type limbs. They do not test their alarm circuitry automatically. Therefore, to verify that the limb will respond to a fault, you must push the test button monthly. The results should be recorded on a test form like this. The newer limbs, like this one, are called digital type limbs, and they test themselves daily by an internal program. If they fail their daily testing, they will audibly and visually alarm with a failure code on the limb's display. This type of line isolation monitors should be tested annually by pressing the push to test button. The results should be recorded on a test form like this. So, let's recap. Analog limbs are to be tested monthly by pressing the test button and the results recorded. The digital limbs are to be tested annually by pressing the test button and the results recorded. But there is a third test that applies to both line isolation monitors. And this test is often missed. NFPA 99 Code 3.3.97 says, Line isolation monitor is a test instrument. NFPA 99 6.3.3.1.5 under test equipment says electrical safety test instruments shall be tested periodically, but not less than annually for acceptable performance. That means the line isolation monitor must undergo a yearly test to verify it is working correctly. NFPA 996.3.2.6.3 covers several requirements that the limb must respond to. Such as NFPA 996.3.2.6.3.2 describes the operation of the lights and the alarm threshold values. The limb must alarm at 5 milliamps but not alarm at 3.7 milliamps. So, both limb types must undergo the annual test instrument testing to ensure accurate performance. The line isolation monitor must be tested with calibrated test equipment. The objectives are 1. To record the current voltage value. 2. Ensure that the red receptacles are not on grounded power. 3. To ensure that the calibrated test equipment has a current leakage value equal to or very close to the limb's current leakage value on leg 1. 4. Then test leg 2 to ensure that the calibrated test equipment has a current leakage value equal to or very close to the limb's current leakage value. 5. Increase the leakage to ground on leg 1 until the limb alarms. A. Record the calibrated test equipment's alarm's current value. B. Ensure the safe light is off. C. Ensure the hazard light is on. D. Ensure the audible is functioning. E. Press the silence button and audible stops. F. Ensure the yellow light is on. 6. 
Now reduce the leakage to ground until the limb is out of alarm. 7. Let's now test leg 2. 8. Increase the leakage to ground on leg 2 until the limb alarms. G. Record the calibrated test equipment's alarm's current value. 9. Restore the limb to its normal state. Now we record all this information on a test form like this one. We then perform an in-office review of the test values to be sure they are in compliance with the NFPA 99. The test form and a field test and inspection certification statement will be emailed to the facility's contact. According to NFPA 996.3.4.2, Record Keeping, you should have a maintenance logbook. File all test results forms and the field test and inspection certification statement in this maintenance logbook. If you do not have a maintenance logbook, Isolated Power Specialists can help you start one. Isolated Power Specialists can perform this test on any manufacturer's limb. Each limb is marked with a test date. If a limb should fail, our technician is equipped to replace any limb at that time thus preventing another service call. Some hospitals and healthcare facilities have desired to have the old analog limbs replaced, thereby eliminating the need to have someone to test, record, and file the limbs monthly. Just a side note, you may want to keep this code in mind. NFPA 996.3.4.1.5 says, after any repair or renovation to an electrical distribution system, the limb circuit shall be tested in accordance with 6.3.3.3.2. The line isolation monitor circuit shall be tested after installation and prior to being placed in service by successively grounding each line of the energized distribution system through a resistor whose value is 200 xv ohms, where V equals measured line voltage. The visual and audible alarms shall activate. If you need service or certification testing on your limbs, please contact us at ronsisolatedpowerspecialist.com. Our certifications are approved by the Joint Commission and the NFPA. You can visit us at our website, isolatedpowerspecialist.com. If you have any questions or concerns, call or email, as with the information on our website. Have a good day.